Searching for builds, bases, or stashes on 2b2t.org is one of my more favorite activities. When I find something, whether it's by accident or I was actively searching for it, it usually comes down to a bit of blind luck when I find something. However, there are times where a bit of skill and knowledge about 2b2t and Minecraft can make finding builds, bases, or stashes much easier. Now, I'm sure you've seen videos from other 2b2t YouTubers doing base hunting videos. Most are just flying around with elytra hacks, following chunk trails until they stumble upon something. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but I feel some of these players have an over-reliance on hack clients and will miss often overlooked clues for player activity. Today, I'm going to go through the steps I do when base hunting on 2b2t. I will also explain ways that you can better protect yourself when making a build, base, or stash on 2b2t. Now, if you haven't seen Sal C1's base hunting video, I highly recommend you check it out. He hits on the major points about base hunting, like flying with elytra hacks to make traveling easier and faster. Plus, he also talks about following chunk trails to see trunks that have already been generated, which can tell you if players have already previously traveled there. He also mentions using the search feature of hacked clients to find things like portals and ender chests. Now these are all great points, but there's definitely more we can add to this to make base hunting much easier. First, I want to start with things that you can look for when exploring that give you clues to potentially finding something. In fact, most of these you don't even need a hack client for, just a keen eye for clues. Now, to be honest, most players on 2b2t are lazy and do not clean up after themselves when traveling, so you can usually find remnants of their activity. Obviously, things left in the open like chests, crafting tables, furnaces, ender chest portals, boats, or sometimes just randomly dropped items are easy to spot. Also, never use unnatural blocks to mark your path. What I mean by an unnatural block is, say using cobblestone or netherrack and making a path in the overworld on top of grass. And please, for the love of God, do not use frostwalker boots over an ocean walking directly to your base. Now let's talk about less obvious but still noticeable clues, like trees that have been cut down that leave the one dirt block in a field of grass. There's also that hard to spot leftover XP orb when you kill mobs. Look for tamed wolves or cats. There's also the occasional mobs that will appear in daylight since they probably spawned at nighttime when a player previously passed through. And then also look for sheep that have been grazing since they eat grass and they'll leave little dirt blocks everywhere they go. Okay, now, let's do some real detective work. Quick, is this sheep's color natural or unnatural? It's unnatural. If you see a sheep whose color is not white, black, gray, light gray, brown, or pink, then it's been colored by a player. And speaking of passive mobs, did you know that when they first spawn in, they are usually very close to one another in a group? If you see several of the same mobs spread far apart, that usually means that the area has been loaded for some time to allow for mobs to wander. Now, when I'm in a desert, I look at how tall cactuses are. If they are all at max height of three, then I know that someone has been in this area for a while as they allowed time for the cactuses to grow. And this same rule can actually be applied to sugarcane too. If are issues like these and you want to protect your location, what would I recommend? Well first, I would make sure that there's no stray blocks placed or items dropped near your location. Make it look as natural as possible. If you're near a desert, you can actually place a piece of string on top of a cactus to stop it from growing, and most people won't even see it. If you're cutting down trees, make sure everything is cleaned up, no random floating leaves, and make sure saplings are fully grown or removed before leaving the location. And also don't leave random dirt blocks in a field of grass. They stick out like a sore thumb. I'd also remove sheep as the longer that their chunk is loaded, the more grass that they eat providing an indication of how long someone has been at that location. Alright, now let's move on to base hunting with the hacked client. Like I mentioned before, Sal C1 hit on some of the major points. Now for me, my favorite hacked client tool is the search feature. With this, I add pretty much every block that would not be a natural block. Sal C1 mentioned adding obsidian for finding ender portals and ender chests. I add things like ladders, doors, melons, redstone items, beds, furnaces, and even crafting tables. 
almost all of these are always present at a base, even those that people try and hide underground. Using the search feature, I can easily find bases if they are within my render distance. Unfortunately, there is no way to prevent this, unless of course you build only using 100% natural blocks for your location. Now I'm going to hit you up with some pro gamer info on the best way to hide some stashes. Use dungeons and mine shafts. At these places are where chests naturally spawn, and filling them with shulkers is a great way to keep items hidden. In fact, mine shafts are the best since they can have several chests for storage, and if you add a few more here and there, it won't be too noticeable. Obviously there's a limit to how much you can store in these places, but it's a great backup plan in case you ever lose your main stash. Always remember, no place on 2B2T is 100% safe. Take me for example, my bone spire base was 3 million blocks from spawn and lasted over 3 years, but it was eventually found. You have to accept nothing is totally safe on 2B2T, but you can have a backup plan just in case. I hope some of the tips I gave you help you in your base hunting adventures or provided ways that you can keep your location a bit secret. If you have any of your own base hunting techniques or ways that you like to hide some of your stashes or items, I would love to hear about them in the comments below. As always, I'm Baron Dome, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.